The First Minister says Scotland could choose to follow European Union regulations if the UK diverges after the Brexit transition period. The EU chief negotiator, Michel Barnier, has warned that the UK must maintain regulations and standards in return for a free trade deal. Nicola Sturgeon was in Brussels today meeting Mr Barnier and told an audience that Scotland has never needed the EU more. Well, our political editor Colin Mackay has been watching the speech. Colin, what did the First Minister have to say? Well, first of all, last week we heard from the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, setting out what he wants at the end of this Brexit transition year. He wants a Canada-style trade deal, but he also got a very stark warning from the European Union that they won't accept anything from the UK that undermines the single market. As you said, the First Minister is in Brussels today. She was meeting Michel Barnier, the EU's chief negotiator, but then, in a speech to EU diplomats, she made Scotland's position clear that Scotland would be willing to divide diverge from the UK's position on things like food standards and the environment if the UK diverges from the European position because she wants Scotland to maintain access as much as she can to the European market. As the EU continually makes clear, the more we diverge from EU standards, the less access we'll have to the single market. So the right to diverge will come at a cost a very heavy cost, in fact, in my view, a cost that is too heavy. There's also been a bit of a row today in Brussels. There was reports this morning that the European Commission had reported the Scottish Government to the Belgian police because of lights that a light show that they'd projected onto the European Commission saying Scotland loves Europe uh, on the day of Brexit, the 31st of January. Now, the, 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 that would have been pretty embarrassing for the First Minister on the day of this vis visit, on the day of her meeting with Michel Barnier, except that it simply isn't true. I've spoken to the, the European Commission this afternoon and they said that the stunt was so short-lived that they just didn't bother reporting it to the police. Colin Hollywood, many thanks for that. The First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has said the Scottish Government will use its powers to keep pace with EU standards in areas under Holyrood's control. Speaking in Brussels, Ms Sturgeon said doing so would make it easier for Scotland to return to the EU as an independent country. A warning that our Chief Political Correspondent Glenn Campbell's package contains flash photography. Brexit talks at breakfast time with the EU's Chief Negotiator Michel Barnier. Nicola Sturgeon wants him to know that the Scottish Government wants the closest possible future relationship with the EU and with its single market. One of the big fears I have and, and big concerns is that we have a UK Government now that is demanding regulatory divergence and that can only mean one thing, it can only mean a race to the bottom on some of these vital protections that matter so much to people. Now, Boris Johnson has said the UK will maintain high standards. But given her doubts about that, the First Minister wants Holyrood to at least match the EU on environmental protection and in other areas under devolved control. And she says that would make it easier for Scotland to return to EU membership if it becomes an independent country. That independence vision was projected onto the EU Commission's headquarters building in Brussels on Brexit Day, apparently at the SNP's behest, and it seems to have raised eyebrows inside the Commission. We are not in the business of being requested or granting authorizations for uh, people from outside for projecting uh, messages on our building. At a Brussels briefing this afternoon, Nicola Sturgeon renewed her commitment to holding another referendum on independence. That's my plan A, B and C. I think ultimately this is a democratic issue that should be resolved democratically and politically. And she was asked about the impact of independence on Scotland's border with England. It's not independence that threatens uh, borders, it's Brexit that does that. It's, and it's the approach to Brexit that has been taken. One of the reasons why I'll continue to argue for the relationship to be as close as possible. But obviously, when we see uh, where the UK-EU relationship ends up, then I can uh, work out, the Scottish Government can work out how we mitigate that. At the Scottish Government's office in Brussels in recent days, they've advertised their desire to keep the EU close. But much more details required 
on how that might be achieved through independence. Glenn joins me now. You say more detail is required. When are we likely to get it? Well, I'm not sure about the exact timescale, but Nicola Sturgeon did say today that the Scottish Government would set out in frank detail how it proposes to secure independent membership of the EU. And the border question would be a key part of that, because if Scotland was to be in the EU and its single market and England and Wales was outside, perhaps moving further away from EU rules, it would be reasonably expected that in those circumstances there would need to be checks on goods crossing that border. So that's a key issue to be addressed. Of course, Nicola Sturgeon has another key issue to address, and that is trying to secure a referendum. There's no prospect of one in the immediate future, at least not one agreed with the UK government, which is resistant to that. At the weekend, some in the SNP, uh, like Joanna Cherry, the MP, suggested Holyrood should be ready to put through its own referendum bill and defend that in the courts if necessary. Nicola Sturgeon said today uh, that while she hasn't ruled out testing the legality of that, she thought her party would be better building the case for independence. Of course, her political opponents would prefer if she parked independence altogether and focused on Hollywood issues like the NHS and education. Well, speaking about Hollywood issues, she lost her finance secretary last week. Was she saying anything more about that? Well, she confirmed today that she has not had any approach from the police about Derek Mackay's online activities, which led to his resignation. She also said that she was shocked and stunned uh, to learn about his behaviour and that any suggestion she had prior knowledge or concern was an attempt to smear her. Uh, she says that the first she knew of it was when it was reported in the press. OK, thank you, Glenn.